Henry Kissinger was born Heinz Alfred Kissinger on May 27, 1923, in Fürth, Germany. He and his family, who were Jewish, fled to the United States in 1938 to escape the Nazis. He joined the U.S. Army during the Second World War and then studied at Harvard University and joined the faculty. When he came into office in 1969, then-President Richard Nixon chose Kissinger as his national security advisor. He was later also named as Secretary of State, becoming the first person to hold both positions at once. Kissinger established his own brand of realpolitik, basing foreign policy on what he said were practical rather than moral decisions. Aaron David Miller served as a negotiator for a number of Republican and Democratic administrations, but not under Kissinger. His detractors will argue that he uh, was cruel and callous. Some argue oh, that could be true of any number of American leaders that he ought to be tried as a war criminal or Cambodia, Cambodia and Laos, his policies toward Bangladesh uh, in the early 70s. Um, but the reality is um, that he also impacted diplomacy in ways that were quite extraordinary. Kissinger did not reveal the 1969 U.S. aerial bombings of Cambodia and Laos to Congress, which escalated the Vietnam War. But it was also Kissinger who met dozens of times with Le Duc Tho of North Vietnam to negotiate an end to the war, for which they were both awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1973. Le Duc Tho refused it. Kissinger engaged with China in 1972, setting the stage for then-President Nixon's visit to the communist country to meet with Chairman Mao Zedong, the first by a U.S. president. This was counted as one of Kissinger's big triumphs. But Jared Hayes of the University of Massachusetts Lowell has a different view, saying Kissinger was a master at branding. He changed the conception of diplomacy through his practice of shuttle diplomacy. He made it high profile. He made it interesting. He made it you know, sexy, if you will. And so that that cements him as a foreign policy brand. But if you peel back that brand, if you if you go beneath the surface, it's not a foreign policy track record. It's that has served the United States particularly well. Kissinger advised every American president since Nixon, up until President Joe Biden, who did not invite him to the Oval Office. His long-standing influence is unrivaled, history professor Michael Kimmage says. But he does not believe that Kissinger's philosophy of realpolitik, or purely interest-based policy divorced from values, has prevailed in American foreign policy. I think that he himself is very aware that the dominant strain of American foreign policy is what could be described as liberal internationalism or Wilsonianism associated with the president, Woodrow Wilson, who established the League of Nations and fought the First World War under the phrase, make the world safe for democracy. This is really the dominant uh, tradition of American foreign policy. And Kissinger is sort of a opponent of that. Uh, and uh, uh, in that sense, I don't think he's in any respect uh, won the argument. Kissinger triggered more controversy in 2022 when he appeared to say Ukraine should be prepared to make territorial concessions to end Russia's invasion. Cindy Sane, VOA News.